All right. All right. So this current version of Gully Wash is, I believe, CP Gully Wash F5. Maybe it's F2. One of those two. Um, they've refreshed it, so they fixed a couple of different spots. Anyway, that's just some basis, ba basic information uh, versus like the default version. So this this is the version they're using in the league this season. So I am gonna be as like surface level as possible. Um, yeah, you can spec me in game. You can watch stream. Don't care. So I'm going to start with the mid fight. Uh, so there's Let me turn on cheats. Okay. So there's a couple of different things you have to know for this mid. So the first basic thing I want to present is like this mid is very rock, paper, scissors e, if that makes sense. So what I mean by this is all of the classes counter another class. So on this mid especially, it's really important to know how that works and why. So let's start with scout. So the most obvious is scout counters soldiers. Soldier bombs and scouts shoots him out of the air. Then demo counters scout because demo can deny a lot of area on this very thin point that doesn't allow scouts to do very much in terms of walking across and shooting things. And then demo is countered by soldier. Soldiers can get on top of the demo and cause him to die. It's pretty straightforward, but understanding how this interaction takes place is like the basis for this mid fight. So let me start with like a basic setup and I can explain what I mean. So the most default is to play your own side. So your demo rolls out to your choke. Uh, I'm just gonna assume that everyone knows the callouts, but I can go over them later if we need me to, or I'm sure you can pick them up as I talk about them. So the demo is gonna roll out choke, uh, choke right here, and play on what is called a uh, your side mid. This is our side, so like if you're a blue team, you're coming from your spawn over there, this is your side. So your demo's gonna get here first, everyone else is gonna end up rolling out through big door, and what this generally looks like is as pocket, you usually want to defend your own drop down by jumping, oh goodness gracious, by jumping over here, making sure that their roamer doesn't mess with your drop down. And vice versa, your roamer wants to go mess with their drop down. Because if their soldier's not there, you can start to cause some problems by jumping up drop down. So that's like the most basic plan is to have your roamer play their drop down, your pocket play your drop down. Then with the rest of your combo, usually a flank scout is going to jump up to right here. Oh goodness, I can't jump. Flank scout is going to jump to here and pistol the demo man so that he can't shoot your combo as they walk up. And as pocket scout, you're going to jump onto this roof, look to deny soldiers if they try to jump at you, but you're mainly just walking your medic up. So you let your medic beam onto you and walk up, and then you'll just jump over to here and meet up with your medic. Everything makes sense so far? Yep. Okay, good. So as the yep. demo, I'm gonna like fall back to elbow for our medic to get the beam on me once the scout jumps up? Yeah, so there's a couple of different things that can happen to you, um, and generally you should not be afraid to back up and get heals either here or in choke like here. You can get a bow very easily. And you're very safe. So that's just the beginning of the mid fight. So this mid tends, tends to be pretty long uh, and develop in interesting ways. So this middle is not rotational. So 
In contrast, I'm sure you guys have played Process by now. You can kind of tell that there's a couple different ways that you can go left or right, and you have the possibility of rotating. So those are called rotational mids. That's like Process, Sunshine, Reckoner, sort of. So this is not that, just for some context, because you're you're not really going to be moving your combo around the point or anything like that. So next up would be the the mid fight, the like middle game of the mid fight. So what you're looking to do in the middle of the fight is get healthy prevent their aggression and try to create your own aggression. So what do I mean by this? You're, as a medic, you're looking to link up with your demo first, get him to full HP, full buff if you can. Then you want to link up with your scouts and play kind of in this right side area. All right, sorry for being late. Oh, no worries. Um, Generally, as medic, you're safest when you're around your scouts, and as scouts, you want to protect your medic from the soldiers at all times. So you want to keep track of those guys whenever they exist anywhere. So the purpose of having your soldiers roll out into their respective positions is so that they create a threat on Romer, and that obviously when you stand up here, you can't see below. So them not being able to see your guy down there creates a threat. And vice versa, putting your pocket down below defends against that threat. So your scouts don't have to worry about a guy being down there, or if there is a guy down there, you'll know about it. Right, so basically, one team is going to end up having to do something. So usually the way that the stalemate is broken is by the demo doing damage across the point. Usually that looks like your demo putting some sticks down in, an, in the middle of the ground and eventually they hit or you guys get hurt first. Like one of the two will happen. Then you kind of have to play reactive off of that. So if your demo does damage, what you want to do is have your demo say that you did damage, call the person, and then you want your soldiers to try to bomb their side. While the soldiers are bombing, you want to walk across one of these sides of the point with your scouts. And as medic, you want to support those scouts, and as demo, you want to defend those scouts by putting stickies defending above point and kind of by their feet. That's like the most basic plan uh, that you could kind of conceive of for this mid. Does that make sense so far? Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little confused, I guess, because like it seems a little counterintuitive to how I thought people would be playing this mid, which is just get soldiers on the on the nipple, <laughs> and they have height advantage, and the bomb they can shoot down or jump on oh, people. Yeah. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. So I'm glad you brought that up. So that's something that a lot of teams will do against you. And the thing that you can do about that... Here, let me uh, go demo. Oh, I'm on a funny loadout. Ham boning. Okay. So as demo, you're kind of generally over here. So if their soldier tries to just stand up there, you can put stickies on it very easily, and he will just get destroyed. There's no... If a soldier decides to make himself vulnerable to you, like either anyone, like a soldier or a scout, just decides to stand here, you just shoot them and you do a ton of damage. Okay. And you'll instantly win the mid, basically. Alright. So... So a combination of scout and demo man spam can kind of get them off the top of it. Exactly. So in this vein, I also want to talk about what happens when you guys start to lose. Because that's a that might happen. Like you might 
lose your demo really fast. You might lose your soldiers fast or something like that. So if you end up losing your soldiers or your demo really quickly, I would recommend as medic just looking to leave right away. Usually that means like either having to duck out big door or leaving through choke. Uh, and then as pocket scout escorting him and the rest of your team can continue to try to get the medic. Um, so I'd say don't leave if you're down one soldier, but definitely leave if you're down two. And if your demo dies without doing any damage, that's those are the two things you want to leave. Leave like instantly. So it was if two soldiers and what else? So if you lose two of any class, not just soldiers, but soldiers will be the most common. If you lose two, you should leave. If you lose your demo, you should leave. No uh, what if it's like a 4v4 situation? You should fight. So, right. it, yeah, yeah. So, those two, me saying that is like if you lose your demo and you don't get anything, or you lose two and you don't get any of their guys, you're happy right. to fight it out with equal numbers or just one player that isn't a demo. Right? Alright. Uh, I guess it's worth asking in general. Mm -hmm. Say uh, demo dies, their med dies. Is that still a leave? Um. So, that's actually a, a more complicated question. I'd say look to... <laughs> of course, positions matter and everything, I understand. Yeah. Well, it's just uh, not so easy to answer necessarily. Like, I think it depends what you kind of want to do, but I think you're fine to stay and fight. Because you're going to, against a less coordinated team, which is kind of the teams you're playing against... Um, so basically what I'm saying is this doesn't hold true across every division, but for you guys, I would definitely say stay in. If you get the medic, you're just going to win every war of attrition. You know, so like every damage you do to them can't be healed, but every damage you take can be. So right. after a while, you'll be able to win. And you just you should just try to protect your medic on your side and defend yourself, basically. Either they'll leave or they'll die. Sound good? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> awesome. Okay, so... I want to talk about the end of the fight and like what this looks like in practice. So, some stuff that you want to look for as... So, who's actually main calling this season? I Did we end we up deciding? Finn calling the like get the the uh, overall map, but I call uh, damage and pushes usually. Okay. Because I'm the demo, so it makes sense for me to go. They're fucked. Push them. Right. I'm, I'm the only one that can really make that call consistently. Yeah, that's fantastic. So what I want you to do at these mids is there's kind of a couple different conditions that you can call that can be punished. So one is obviously going to be damage. If you do a lot of damage to scouts you can have your soldiers bomb or demo. I, I Actually, no. Anytime you do a lot of damage to anything, just have your soldiers bomb. There's no stipulation. The other thing you can call is like as demo, you can put stickies down and so I should show you what I mean from like far away. So if you like snipe a couple of stickies so that you're you're like denying them some space like this. So say you put down stickies like this. And they decide, okay, I'm just going to back up to right here. This is exactly the time when you want to call a bomb. So you should say, I want our soldiers to bomb. They're under the awning. Or, I don't know what to call this. <laughs> but you should just call a bomb. And as soldier, you can... S you have, like, the easiest layup of a bomb when they're under this thing. Because... <laughs> You can just splash off of every surface and it's impossible to miss. This is like the easiest bomb of all time to just jump from right here and shoot them here. Blow everything up, yeah. Yeah. So that's that's like your two win conditions basically. Is if you see either of those things happen, um, you can call a bomb and that's going to be pretty good. Anytime so, you... Uh, Go ahead. So as a soldier, or... At particularly as a roamer. Mm -hmm. So should I be looking to get behind them through dropdown, or should I be playing more passively? A little of both. I would look to make it not clear what you're going to do. 
So if you play down there and they don't contest you at all, there's kind of an ever-present threat that you could go drop down. And sometimes just not going drop down, but forcing them to worry about it is good enough in itself. Okay. So, so he only has to go drop down once, so then it's a threat forever, basically, right? Yeah, so I would look to go drop down maybe 50% of the time, or less. Because every time, if they have to commit... Like, if their soldier or scout has to watch this, like this, instead of actually playing the game, and you, instead of actually going drop down, you just bomb, that's going to be hugely advantageous for your team, right? They have, like, a player that's looking for you but doing nothing, and you're doing a ton of stuff in front, right? So that's kind of the idea. And also, I don't want to forget about our pocket, who is loyally chilling under here. After a while, they'll either have their soldier play here or not, so you'll start to realize, but playing on the ground is pretty good as soldier because it's hard for things to shoot you, and it's easy for you to shoot things. Let me show you what I mean. When you play on the ground, you have pretty good angles for shooting off the ceiling, actually. So like, if you can hit this splash, it's actually kind of good, but you don't want to waste your rockets. Uh, two options that you have in the, the mid, usually towards the middle or end, are to like bomb their side, very straightforward. Or if you're starting to get hurt or you feel threatened or something, or uh, they're getting aggressive, you can bomb your own side. Hopefully it's kind of evident when you should do those or you'll start to get the hang of it over your scrims. Is that all? I feel like I've been relatively vague, but I think once you start to play this a bunch, it'll everything I've said will make sense and come you together. You can't give us the micro, right? So it's just better to give us the overall strategy. Yeah, I think uh, eventually you'll start to figure out things that you like and things that you don't like, and you can say, I like when we do this bomb and I don't like this. I don't know. I can, um, okay, so that's, that's like the, the our side mid. That's the very vanilla plane version. I'll give you the quick overview of the other mid that you can do, which would be their side. So this would be, generally this is what happens if your demo messes up the rollout and you have to go big door. So you roll out like this and then you go fight their side. So usually what this looks like is all of your players are going onto their side. Usually you have both of your soldiers bomb off this rock and land either like kind of here and shoot here or land like around here. So you're either bombing deep or bombing to cut them off in elbow while your team walks up. So usually it's gonna look like your scouts are gonna jump up. Oh my goodness, I really cannot jump. Your scouts are going to jump off up on this thing and jump up over, goodness, over onto here. And then your medic and demo are going to walk up through the banana. And generally they'll be trying to come up through here, so you're looking to fight this demo right away and then cut them off and not let them play the mid. It's... All right more straightforward. It's pretty confrontational and a bit more risky. Also much faster. Definitely. Uh, Friday, or yeah, yesterday, I was on one of the mixes and we played Gullywash. Mm -hmm. Brisk was there too. We had, to do, we had to we had to do the right play a few times. Yeah. Though Brisk was on the other team. Yeah was unfortunate. <laughs> it was a, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Interesting mix. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. So the vibe was weird? The vibe very. was very weird, yes. But regardless. Uh, yeah. Would you say right is more aggressive? Yeah, so right side is the aggressive side, left side of the, is the, uh, I'm hesitant to say passive because that's not what it is. Um, the default. Yeah, it's the default. There is kind of a... 
in general in TF2 people have a habit of calling the like default stuff passive or like a normal mid a passive mid but that's kind of a misnomer because you should always be actively looking for uh, openings and advantages and looking to do damage. You should never be waiting for them to come to you. Or if you are waiting for them to come to you, it should be like in a very intentional way that you're in a good position, which this is not. You don't want them to just bomb you when you're under this. Hopefully this all makes sense and it will be easy to play once you get into it. I wasn't here for like the first bit. What what was the flank scout supposed to do? Was it so I think I You play on this thing and you wanna uh -huh. pressure the demo. Usually you can just pistol him. And right. you're not looking to do too much. But then once you kinda of finish once the mid starts to happen, like everyone starts to get in position, you usually have to back up. Jump on here and then like go meet up with your team over here. But you're looking just, oh. So, I'm just a bit of a bait while, uh, while I'm pistoling the demo. Somewhat. So you want to hurt him. Obviously, you want, if he's not going to shoot you, you should actually run at him and try to kill him. But the whole point of the scout being, or of you being here and shooting him, is so that he can't just walk up to right here and shoot your team as they walk across. Because he's going to be at mid first, right? So mm -hmm. he wants to just shoot stickies at your team, and you're there to stop him from doing that. Okay. But inversely, so I'm the threat. Yeah. So it, and like on the other foot, if or other hand, other foot, I don't know. If he ignores you and like looks and shoots your demo or something, like you should shoot him. You should shoot him a lot and cause him problems. So that's like a really good way to instantly win the mid, is if this guy ignores you, you just kill him. You can run at him. You're more than happy to trade with a demo. Okay, makes sense. Alright, awesome. So let's talk about other things. Um, I'll go through each point uh, real fast. We can talk about the pushes and the holds. Um, add even to send. Yeah, I can. I'm just. Tier 6 jumper right here. Merely a tier 4 jumper. Okay, let's start with last, and we can start with the hold. Um, so, obviously, there's three different situations there's add, advantage, disadd, and even. So, add and disadd referring to either two players of you you have two more players than them uh or more than 20 percent uber than they do uh or just at the opposite hopefully you all know by now i just want to cover my bases um yeah so thinking about holding this ad what i would recommend for a hold would be to try to get a gun up if you have time so if they're knocking at your door, like they're gonna push, don't try to set up a gun. But if they're like on mid and your scout spawns, like you can build a gun, I recommend putting it right here or right here. Uh, usually that's gonna be your flank scout. Then okay. if you don't have time to do that, I'd recommend playing heavy instead. Then on pocket scout, I'd recommend either pyro or heavy. All In right. general, especially on so in general, on these lasts that are really small, like this one, where it's just a small room, you don't want to be scout, because it's... And to, to make a complicated answer short, scout's strengths are mitigated by being in a small room, and his weaknesses are amplified, and then vice versa. The other classes, like pyro and heavy, uh, their weaknesses are mitigated, because you're not as much at risk of, like, snipe getting sniped and they're they're slower than scout so they're scouts are comparatively weak on small lasts and off classes are comparatively strong so i would always recommend running off classes on gully wash on scouts but soldiers should always say stay soldier in my opinion so that was flank scout gun wait 
If I do play pirate, what loadout should I use? Um, doesn't particularly matter, but I think the classic would just be you want to have a normal air blast, so. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't really matter. I think you could even run, you can run anything, but you just want to be able to, so let me talk about this. So if you play pyro, you should normally camp this pipe, and your objective here is to block any uber they try to push. So whether that's from shutter or from river, you want to be able to drop down and stuff either of them with air blasts, basically. All right. Yeah, so usually, yeah, that'll be pocket scout or heavy, and I would recommend playing like right here. And you can try to tank the uber a bit, and your meta can try to arrow you from in spawn, basically. And then as Pocket Soldier, I recommend just playing Shutter until they try to push and cause problems by spamming. And once they try to push, I would jump away to, uh, oops. I would jump to right here and look to play above the point. Yeah, the main thing you want to worry about is not getting, I swear they like change this. This, curves look, this curve looks different. I don't know. Anyway, you don't want to get killed by this uber, no matter what. And then vice versa on Roma, you usually want to play right here and counter spam or like crossfire. Yeah, crossfire with your with your pocket. And same thing, you can usually actually stay up here during the uber. It's pretty safe for you. Um, so you should stay up here if you can and fight from the side ground. Does that make sense? Okay, cool. So, uh, so who should hold the river then? So now here's the, the fun part. You have your demo play water. What? what? So, uh, bro. Right. So this is only in disad, right? Only in disad when they have Uber and you don't, or they have two picks. You can put stickies like here or here and defend yourself. So you should play down here and watch this trap so that they can't okay. push you. And then otherwise I would put like four or five stickies like along this thing and along the walls so that they can't insta cap. And you can just camp, camp down here. So this gives you the best chance to like live and hold a powerful position for your team. So hopefully these lead you to have success in a uh, last hold. Uh, then in even, I would just recommend having a, your pocket scout stay scout, then your other scout going engineer building a gun or going heavy. And then kind of all the, the same things apply, except instead on demo, you can play anywhere on here, trap river, trap main, trap shutter, trap point. It's all gonna be okay. Uh, the main thing you care about is a sack coming from river so normally also another common gun spot is to put it here so that your medic can play around it and it denies bombers from river so then oh i see yeah yeah it, it kind of blocks it's kind of blocked off from most spam unless they're really precise with it yeah exactly and the other thing is as medic you want to be aware that this is the safest spot you can play as uh play against a sniper so they'll usually have their sniper try to peek there or through there, uh, main or river. Sight on the e. Either way, on if I'm standing there. Wait, say that again. So he doesn't have sightline on me if I'm standing there either either way. Yeah. So peek. usually, like being able to dodge behind this pillar, like this is an impossible shot. A lot of like newer medics will just stand like in the default position, kind of over here, and get peeked by this medic and die, or by the sniper and die. So yeah, just try to cut off this sight line here. The only thing you have to be aware of is he could peek here, so that's why I advise that a roamer plays right here, just to prevent this possibility at all. And it's a good place to play as roamer. Uh, otherwise, things stay the same. If they... I actually want to double check if this... Uh... Okay, yeah. In the older version of this map, this you could shoot through it, and it was banned. Anyway, now they fixed it. That's good. Um, 
Okay, so then let's talk about pushing out with even, and then we'll talk about add. Um, I don't want to take too long, so I'll try to go a bit faster. So when you push out with, so after they sack, usually they're going to sack one. You want to counter sack. I would recommend having your roamer go from here and then try to get up their stairs like this. Usually their medic's going to be somewhere here and you can just jump right through. Sometimes they'll be prepared for this and they'll have someone looking at you, but you can usually just fight this guy with your, with your pocket. You can usually peek like this and fight whoever's like trying to stop you and then one of you can get into the stairs and counter sack. Um, so that would be an even. If you have add, so there's two types, player and uber. If you have player add or uber add, your uber, or your combo, I should say, should always go river. And your combo should consist of your pocket soldier, your scout, your pocket scout, and your medic. The other three should go, uh, like, lobby and watch shutter. Both shutters, like baby door and shutter down there. So usually what you want to do is bring your scout and soldier up here. You'll want to walk in, just walk through up here. If they try to fight you, you can use Uber into them. Uh, and they'll usually end up leaving choke. And you can force them out and cap this point. Then meanwhile, you have your demo making sure that these two shutters are trapped so that you can't get back capped from anything and your scout is protecting him and your roamer is vaguely around. As roamer, it's generally your job to clear like water um, and then like launch pad or I don't know, funny spots around lobby. So... Usually, so if you're pushing out, this would be like, yeah, any kind of ad situation. You just want to clear water, push through here, blah, blah, blah. So you look like everything's clear. Then you, you'll just circle through lobby usually, like clear lower or go uh, launch pad straight away and just clear this all. Usually how my, there's like a lot of ways that you can do it, but the three places that need to be cleared at the end of the day are, are water, um, launch pad, and then wood, baby door area here. Wait, how about secret? Uh, I guess you can clear secret, but there? it's kind of like, you're not really gonna see anyone or like most people won't just hide in here. I mean, you can clear it, you can double check, but you'll usually be able to see someone if they come in. If you just lose track of people, like, it happens, but I don't know. What was the question about a shutter? Is there not a shutter in a oh, no, there, baby door? There is. It's just messed up. Oh. Yeah. Uh, just because of the DM plugin. Right, okay. This yeah. Is Sorry. So, I would recommend you... Have your roamer clear water and then go launch pad and play like lobby like here and then walk upper. And then I would have your flank scout play around your demo and just double check that this is clear. The flank scout will be with me. Yeah. And then as demo, you can watch both doors from right here. And flank scout, you should just play to protect him like on stairs or around. Eventually, once your team gets in, you'll want to push through. The only thing to be aware of is the sniper and big door. So you don't really want to use this Uber out of here, but sometimes you're just going to get forced or they're going to be caught and you should just try to catch them. But that's up to your own discretion. It's easy to mess this all up at first, so don't get discouraged. It is complicated. And we're probably going to get back capped some. Yeah, definitely. Uh, especially once you guys actually push out and start the cap, people love to just get their forward spawn and run baby to last. So, or go spy. These are all classic. Yeah, oh, th that reminds me. Um, I'll write it down in the notes. But I was going to say, our scouts should definitely get uh, class switch binds set up so that they can go spy to see if they have a spy. Yep. 
Okay, so let me let me try to go quickly because we don't have a ton of time, only like 20 minutes. So holding on second, when you're disad, you just want to play back river as medic and the rest of your classes can play river or in lobby or you can set up to sack your soldier from like up top here. I think I think they might have removed the thing. No, it's still there. Spooky is still a thing. It was here? No, it's in the corner, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah, it's there. Okay. I'm just bad. You can stand on that for sure. I you just have to not be really bad. <laughs> um as long as you're not like falling down on it. If you just land right there, you'll stay on it. Anyway, yeah, so you can set up to have that guy sack, but generally you just leave river and you're gonna be okay. Then in an even situation, the most common setup is gonna be demo and pocket soldier and medic and pocket scout a choke. Usually pocket scout plays here. Uh, something I like is soldiers to play on here because you actually have this nice spam angle where their demo can't really return fire at you. And as demo, I would just like trap the choke and chill. Don't get too crazy trying to spam or anything. And then on the flank, very common to just have your soldier play like here and have your scout play just around all, all around big door. You just want to make sure that they don't bust. So the thing that you're worried about usually is if they rotate their beam towards big door, you want to rotate your medic over here as well to stuff their push. Usually, I'd say most teams bring their demo as well. So I'd, I would just bring your demo and medic over and stand here and make sure they don't get through. And then if their medic goes back, you just go back. You just mirror. That's uh, that's even hold. Say that again? We're responding to them. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. So they're, they're going to be trying to sack. Usually they'll sack through choke or they'll try to send someone behind through baby door. Those are the most common. And then usually that person will try to go like through upper and bomb or something funny. Anyway, you don't need to really do anything different. You just hold the chokes and eventually they'll, they'll sack and you can kill him or he'll force you. Um, then for pushing, when you have add, there's two things that you could do. You can go through choke and try to take it for free. You don't want to use the super. You just want to have your scout like swing through the middle, check traps. There can be traps on here or here, kind of anywhere. Um, you just check, then you want to like swing wide, check this for a soldier, check this for a soldier, and this light for a soldier. Thank you. Yeah, you can stand on it. I just walked in my head. Yeah. Soldier can hide up here. So you just check for those guys. Then once you're in, you just walk across. Usually you don't want to use the super. They'll just walk away. Then the opposite would be through a big door. This would be like if they're playing a little bit too close and you want to punish them. You use your uber on a demo man right here like he puts a sticky here jumps towards their choke you follow with the scout up banana and you catch your demo and then you have your the rest of your team bust through choke and drop down you don't have to go drop down but it's nice to clear it and make sure there isn't going to be a guy there all right so does that all make sense so far it seems simple enough Okay, awesome. I'm glad we have defaults, because that's something we were kind of... Like, we've scrimmed Gully Wash a time or two. Mm -hmm. um, and it's nice to have a better idea of like what our basic game plan can be, and we can obviously adapt as the situation evolves. Yep, to. exactly. Alright, so next thing is mid. So, holding mid when you're disad. Usually, as medic, you want to play out of choke. You can build with a scout. You're usually scared of the aforementioned uber where they bomb their demo from big door. And if they walk through choke, you usually set up to spam and force as they walk through. Usually you have your soldiers play like uh, like one on nipple and then one hiding on the lamp or 
on these things. Or you can have both your soldiers play far away and spam from back here, try to get a force. So then your objective is basically just to get out without losing people or to sack your intentional roamer. When it's even, you want to hold close. So you usually want to have your, the normal combo classes at choke. Usually as medic, you want to heal them like from right here. As soldier, you want to kind of beat like this, whatever. Then big door is just going to be the normal flank classes playing right here like roamer and scout usually plays a little further back or can swing wide and aggress in a bit your so now i get to start talking about sacks i guess in even situations so what i said last time the two simplest sacks are gonna be sending a soldier through a choke uh, i think the best way to do this is just to go like this and jump through and then you can usually try to see what's happening from here so they're not always going to be in the same spot so it's a little bit hard to guess so like you can usually swing oh gosh that's not a good jump if you like swing as wide as you can and get all the way out to here this gives you enough time to see what's here and then jump again and commit and then that's like just a classic single through choke. Then the other one you can do, which I would recommend a little bit more, is to have your combo rotate. So you have your demo and your medic rotate only. So you leave your pocket and scout a choke. Oh yeah, I should say pocket scout. It's your responsibility in even situations to stand watch right here and watch drop down. Yeah. Yeah. Or kind of, you can kind of stand here, but it's a little riskier. I would recommend just chilling back here, watching drop down. All right. At all times. So then, with your beam and demo rotated over here, you want to buff your roamer and have him go down, baby. And then he will usually, like, someone will generally come back to try to mess with him, usually through shutter. So you can just go baby, and you can go like over through river. Gosh, I'm doing the worst jumps ever. And then once you're here, you can get the pack and look to do some kind of bomb and try to kill the med here or something. You can also send your sa here the you can send your scout behind as well uh, and achieve something similar. So. You're just trying to break the stalemate somehow. Okay, does all that make sense so far? Yep. Okay. Next up is going to be pushing. So, if you have a if you have player ad, I'd recommend pushing through choke. What you want to do is just have your uh, your pocket jump through. Same thing, just jump wide, clear above. Um, then, as the rest of your team, you can kind of swing wide, and you just want to walk usually just take this high ground. Yeah, pretty straightforward. You'll take the point. You'll force them out. Once you have this high ground, you're just in a good position. They'll usually leave up there or something, or leave out shutter. And you can just try to hit some spam or something. Um, Interesting. Yeah, and this is... You don't want to use Uber when you walk through the store. Because you have very little way to catch them from anywhere here. And almost no vision. Things to be aware of right. here are definitely a high bomb, so like what I showed you is going to be pretty common. It's just very easy to go like this and just be super high and land right there. Uh, so just like swing wide, clear everything, look up. Yeah. The other uber you can do is a little bit more complicated. Um, my team likes to call this the rappy slappy. Um, there's kind of three different versions that there are. You can just walk through a big door, and if they're like on the ground, they're totally caught, you can just use into them from behind. Most teams won't do this, but definitely at newcomer amateurs, some teams will mess up and miscount and stand there. And you can just walk in and use into them. 
The other two options are basically, I don't even know if I want to say these, but I'll just say them as like a rough introduction. Maybe you can use them. So if the team is smart, they'll be playing river, right? Leaving. So they'll be up there. The object of this Uber is to have your combo. So usually it's going to be your scout and a soldier or two scouts and your medic. You go through baby door. You go up the stairs <clears throat> and you try to catch them right here before they spot you. And then you just use in the staircase and you fight them here and hopefully you wipe them. The last variation is, this is just extra bonus information. Um, you don't have to do any of these, they're all a little bit more complicated moving pieces, is you run the same uber but you go like this and you go here instead and you cut them off when they're trying to leave through a river and then you can use into them here i don't think a lot of teams are going to be smart smart enough to leave so fast but just uh bonus information i guess i definitely want to i do like the idea of the wraparound because it seems simple and like oh we know for sure we're ahead 20 percent in uber and they're still playing close to choke let's just blow, blow the shit up out of here, yeah basically. exactly yeah yeah so you want to try that try that once or twice perfect yeah, see how it goes yeah the yeah. easiest by far is just to take this for free through choke and take the high ground so finally pushing from second into last the hardest part when you're dis out as medic you want to be like at choke just playing out scout you want to build and just watch for bombers the rest of your team can set up to sack uh, or spam as they try to get through you can spam up through here and like here then usually your flank is fine to leave big door oh goodness I'm yeah your flank is fine to leave big door and just watch these and try to spam them and then you're just out on mid. Okay, so then right. for taking last, in an even situation, you want to stay out of lobby until you have Uber. So you should build your Uber up here. Um, you can have your pocket soldier watch river like this. And you can have your demo and roamer watch baby and shutter, baby door and shutter. Uh, usually demos just, I would recommend just in general putting traps above the doorway because they're harder to clear than below. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the only, there's like some map specific exceptions, but yeah, definitely trap above. Um, okay, so then once you have, you should take a lobby and try to sack. So the sack I recommend that you do is, oops. Um, So, sorry, so as med, I get up there by jumping from the point? Uh, yeah, you'll just climb up and walk across. So it's actually pretty rare we'll ever go in just through lobby? No, you can go through lobby too. This is, honestly, if there, if no one's home, you just peek this and make sure there's no sticks above, and then you're, you're clear. Right. It's just, both have pros and cons. The pro... Of going uppers, there's not going to be stickies most of the time. I shouldn't say that at your level. I don't know. There could be stickies, but it's usually a bit safer to like take it slow and climb up. I would say at our level, I'm expecting more random sticky traps. Yeah, that's what I was thinking too. <laughs> anyway, the con of going river is that they can have a sniper playing right here and mm, drop your medic or something or drop your demo. Dropping any player is pretty bad, so the con to going shutter is obviously the demo being a here and like trying to trap this but you're pretty safe from snipers from all angles here it's pretty hard for them to snipe you maybe a sniper could play here but this like kind of silly um yeah you can take it either way it doesn't particularly matter the sacks i would recommend to do are to do some kind of fancy jump from river I think 
Gosh, I'm not really a rumor player, so I don't know. I think you can do, like... Uh, I'm not sure where the speed shot is, but you can do some kind of, like, speed shot or jump into point. Uh, I just don't know how to do it, or, like, don't remember. There's, a, there's an objective. Yeah, like this. Already have. Something like that. So that's the classic bomb sack. Uh, other thing you can do is probably launch pad. Uh, you can jump off this and try to land here. The thing that's going to most stop you from sacking is going to be guns. I would recommend not bombing before you've taken out the gun. You should always coordinate your spam first. Clear all of those gun spots I told you, they're the most common. So the easiest way to do that is from main. You can peek this gun really easily. And this gun is a little bit more complicated, but I'm not sure if you can tell. You can like sort of see this gap. Uh, uh, it's hard to tell from far away because of like how the lines look, but you can actually see if there's a gun here or not. Uh, and spam it. Obviously I can't. Okay, yeah, this rocket would hit. If it were right there, it, you would see it. Anyway, and then the, the last way is to check uh, river for the gun here. Also, sometimes people will put funny guns like in the corner or here or something. Yeah, funny gun. But they're pretty bad. I mean, if you, so like if they have a gun here and you sack from launch pad, it's just not gonna hit you. Like, you just kill... <laughs> you just jump over the gun and it's not gonna shoot you. It gets you deeper, right? Because it shoots you in the ass. Exactly. That's honestly one of the main drawbacks of guns on this side. Um, because doing some kind of sack from here, you're just getting free momentum from the gun. So that's something to think about. And then, okay. I've talked about sacking. The last thing is pushing. So you have, there's two different Ubers that are the most common, and that's going to be from River. You just pop around this corner, usually on your demo. There's two things that you can do. If you're not sure about a gun, slash like you don't have time to spot for a gun, so like say you only have 30 ad, you just have to go, you don't spot for the gun. Uh, what you, sh bleh. what you should do is pop on your demo right here, just have him jump right here and clear all the common spots and then you can play point and trap their spawn. And the rest of your team can bust from wherever. Uh, either they can follow you from river, they can go launch pad, they can try to go shutter or main. Or the best place of all is to send people through water. Usually having a scout run water and just one, just one scout run water and start the cap really quickly is really beneficial. Forces them off the point, off the uh, left side, right? Yeah, so the whole point of an uber is either they play and spawn uh, and don't defend the point, or they stay out, defend the point, and you kill them because you're invincible. Those are your two main objectives. So trying to force their hand by capping while using is a really difficult combination for them to deal with. The other thing you can do with this Uber is just bomb your demo across. Then you just walk across with your scout and med and you play right side, you trap here, trap point. And Basic demo push, yeah. yeah. The last thing would be to go shutter and you have the same options. Uh, usually it's gonna be demo scout again. You don't really have to jump, but I would recommend just sticking their spawn first, then putting sticks on point, and trying to get your your flank scout to play water uh, and cap point, or have your flank scout run like main and just run directly to point while you're pushing. The key, the key concept of this last point is threatening them with the uber and the cap at the same time. So making sure that your flank scout is aware and prepared to push at the same time as you're using the uber is really critical and being communicative with your combo about when you're going in so that usually looks like when you pop through you say like we used we're in uber's ending we're playing right and then your demo can say like there's sticks on point now you're clear 
uh, and then like your scout can play on point immediately. Sound good? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, okay. Now you have to scrim, I believe, right? Uh, no, I'm good. I I oh. scrim at ten. Oh. Okay. I thought you guys had scrims. Um. No, we I don't believe we do. Oh, okay. Yeah, no. Well, that's yeah, okay. I have a few questions if I could, uh... Yes, please. Some... Excellent. So, um... Going forward, I, you you are scheduled at minimum one map review... Um, one demo review a week, right? Correct. Alright, what are the best type of demos that we should try to be, like, finding to get reviewed? So, in Ooh, general... Like the five four games that are, like, really close? Do we want games where we kind of just get shit on? What are in we my personal for? experience, it's the close losses that are the best, but... Yeah, we'll yeah. In general, close games are always better than stomps in either direction. That being said, ah. what you're looking for in a demo review is usually something more specific and more substantial. So, I would recommend from like a student's, from just like a traditional student teacher point of view, like with you being the students, like coming in and treating it as if it's office hours, and I am someone who can answer questions and solve problems. That's the best way to approach it, this. If, if, like, you had a scrim and you're like, okay, they kept beating us with this thing, what do we do? Or, like, okay, we were trying to sack here, but it just didn't work, and, like, we're not really sure what we need to do differently. That's the best way to approach a demo review, in my opinion, especially with me. Um, does that answer your question? Uh, yeah. It kind of gives me an idea. So we should, uh, approach it not just with getting it reviewed, but specifically, like, we have problems we need solved. Yeah. And looking for answers. Okay. Yeah, because obviously, um, an hour, uh, like, my one hour is, like, y you, your team collectively is six people and six six individual hours so like anytime that all of us meet in a review it's like collectively your team is losing more time by showing up so it should be like the most valuable thing for your time so don't feel like you need to review with me every week if you if you're doing well and you don't have questions and you don't feel like you're struggling then like by all means work on dm do something else don't feel like you have to ask me for a review i'm here to provide it but you don't have to utilize it as well. Right. I see you just trying to flake. I understand. The best time yeah. when I like, <laughs> do reviews. I all. <laughs> the best time when I do re redo reviews and stuff is if I'm frustrated on something I can't, like I'm not doing properly, or something. Um, maybe it's more on an individual le level, but I think it could be uh, transfer to team level. Like, oh, this isn't. I guess uh, this is kind of just the same thing, but uh, it's like, oh, this didn't work, um, and it keeps not working, and they're doing something that we can't deal with, or it's just something that you don't know how to play around or something like that and it's like got nuance to it yeah so those are those are exactly the sort of things i want you to bring into the review it's like if i was playing medic and i keep getting bombed and dying i would be like what how should i position myself better to die the less on this map specifically right or like something like that yeah and you can always feel free to just if you have simpler questions like that exactly like oh i'm having trouble on gully wash i'm getting bombed a lot and when i play choke or something like that like i can answer these questions over discord dm very easily as well so it's not like you have to bring them to a review of course um anyway as far as finding scrims go for the week right are we going to be just like two hours of straight gully wash is that probably the most effective way to practice the map should we still try to mix in other maps? So, it's kind of whatever is palatable to you. Oh, hold on, let me stop recording. 